All right, folks, what is going on? Welcome back. This is episode 336 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And uh, today, we're going to talk about some uh, Falcons football. Uh, you know, a lot of great things going on in the States, bro. Pretty much talked about that uh, throughout the last few days. And uh, it's it's a great time to be an Eagle, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just phenomenal what they've been doing over there. Spring game was a success. But now it's time to take the turn to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, the draft is coming up, and there's a lot of interesting things going on with the draft as far as who they're going to pick and uh, what direction they're going to go. Now, as far as me, I'm going to give you my scenario for the first uh, round, first three rounds of the draft for the Falcons, what I think they should do, and um, why I'm – it's to the point now I'm going to – I can really stick with – where we're going now the draft is in a couple of days and it's just been a lot of speculation back and forth even when you go on certain websites you will see a mock draft saying one thing and in two days or in some cases the next day or even the same day they're saying something else what the falcons are going to pick or who they're going to pick so um it is it's, it's all over the place therefore i'll sit back and wait it Obviously, obviously, because I had other content to make as well. I had uh, oh, sat back and waited, and now I I pretty much got it down to where I think this uh franchise should go. That doesn't mean I know. That doesn't mean that um, I have some insight. I always just give you my personal opinions from a fan perspective. So uh, we're going to go with that, and um, let me know what you guys think throughout the comment section, or follow me on Twitter at VF Baller, and uh. We'll just go from there. If you uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on uh, Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. So if you want to listen to the podcast on any of those avenues, they're there for you. And um, it's just it's just a good time for for football right now. I mean, like I said, you George Southern's doing good. And as far as developing their team, the Falcons are going in a different direction now. Um, the USFL is actually pretty good, too. It's a pretty good defense in football. I haven't talked about that much, but uh, it's been looking pretty good. I've been watching it. Um, don't want to go too further more than that, but if you want to watch football, that's where to go for right now. Nevertheless, let's talk about these uh, uh, first few rounds for the Falcons. Um, the Falcons are picking at number eight. We kind of know where... Uh, you got to know where this is going as far as uh, best player available uh, goes. Uh, I thought personally, um, and there's other mock drafts is pretty much still saying this, that the best player available will get picked up. Um, but uh, we kind of know how, uh, like I said, what Terry Fontenot and them are trying to do. They picked up a lot of pieces throughout the offseason season where they could technically just go best player available. I think I did a video about that not too long ago or a, a, a part of the episode that I did not too long ago about going best player available. But let's go ahead and just lock that down. Let's let's go ahead and, and, and really put some positions and maybe in some cases even players to those uh, picks. Uh, so at number eight, I was really big on Sauce Gardner. I thought that he was going to be the guy – that uh pretty much was going to be on the other side of AJ Terrell, and but that was before Casey Hayward was signed, and uh now that's where that was my number one, you know, pick at number eight. But now with Casey Hayward being signed, now I'm just sitting there scratching my head like, uh, I don't know, that may not be uh that may not be the pick, that may not be ideal. Now I know there's other mock drafts still saying that they're going to pick him. I don't know. Now you're going to have like three guys that are, I mean, you can't never have enough cornerbacks, but you have three guys that are going to be playing across the board where like, who's going to be the nickel. I mean, AJ Terrell is already showing that he can hold it down on one side of the field. Case Hayward can as well. Will Sauce Gardner come in as a rookie and try to be that nickel back? I don't even know if that's his position. Also, I also feel that, uh, um, also I do feel that um, you got guys like Isaiah Oliver coming back. You know, guys like him could really play the nickel. Did a pretty good job before turning to ACL. So, I don't know if that's actually going to be the move. I, I'm not sure. I'm not saying that it won't happen. But 
even though that was my pick, it kind of threw a wrench into things because Casey Hayward was signed. But with that being said, uh, it it kind of boils down to pass rush or wide receiver. And I know a lot of people in Atlanta Falcons Nation Discord has been, you know, really big on the pass rush thing. You know, pass rush has been a, a issue for the Falcons for a, a few years now. So why not take uh, a edge rusher? I look. I believe you. I, I I'm I'm not. I, I I believe that we need to take that. That's based on need. Um, a lot of these guys are starting to be hyped up now for pass rusher, and um, I'm not saying that they're not. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm not sure that you had to take one at number eight, and I've been saying this for a while now. Um, I'm not saying that because I don't think any of them are bad. I don't think any of them can't play, but uh, I think you could probably get the Saints have a quality of pass rusher in the second or third round. Maybe even the fourth round depends on who's there at the time, and, you know. And, and that's why I'm not really big on the pass rush or, or edge rushers. It's so many of them out there. I mean, it's plenty of of, of uh, edge rushers to the point where there's not one person that you have to get. Now, I know Kevon Thibodeau is there. He may go at number eight to the Falcons, and um, I, I'll be okay with that. Um, I think he's a, a bona fide stud. I think he can play, and, uh, and, and if he does get picked at number eight, I can see where it's warranted. Like I said, the only reason why I don't think that it's a big deal is because you have so many pass rushes and none of them really separate themselves from the rest. Maybe there's like one or two, and then the rest of them are like, you know, 2A, 2B, 2B, 2C. You know, it's just so many of them that are out there. But outside of that, looking at wide receiver, Garrett Wilson may be off the board. Drake London may be that guy that I've heard a lot of talk about that. And I did a video on that as well, talking about Drake London could be picked at number eight. And I'm definitely not against that. And the more I lean, the more I think about it, the more I lean towards the receiver. And I'll tell you why. First of all, the Arthur Smith is probably looking at best player available. Second of all, this is an offensive laden league. Don't get me wrong. I believe, you know, pass rushers, they matter. Don't get me wrong. You want to get a good linebacker. You want to get a shutdown corner. It's one of the reasons why A.J. Terrell is highly coveted. That's why we got Casey Hayward. Um, but with us getting Lorenzo Carter, a couple of other defensive tackles, um, we end up getting Rashad Evans. Um, I can see where that the Falcons feel that this is just enough for right now the defense, the players that they didn't pick up is enough right now that they don't have to get nobody at number eight on defense. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that it's, you know, that's something that they should do, but I can see that scenario. The flip side of that, they did get a handful of receivers. Some of these guys look like they're going to be special team guys. Some of them could play in the slot. Some guys could play at, um, on, on, on the outside. But I would say you we don't we still don't have like a a number one receiver out there. I want y'all to understand this. We don't have a number one receiver, but we did pick up a lot of uh we did pick up a lot of guys at receiver. But we didn't none of these guys are like going to be a bona fide number one. Not as of right now. As far as the edge rushers go, I don't see anybody that's just going to be on one side of the field or on one side of the defensive line on every snap. Dean Pease, his defense kind of don't work like that. You rotate a lot of guys in and out. A lot of guys are just pure athletes that can actually get to the quarterback. So I don't know if that's going to be the case as far as somebody getting picked there. I'm not saying that they won't be, but the more likely scenario with this being a passing and a more offensive laden league, I would not be surprised if they turn around and get a Drake London or another receiver at number eight. So, that's where I'm going to think about on that one. Now, as far as later on, second round, uh, let's look at this scenario. I've heard, um, I ain't going to say I've heard, but I've read some scenarios where the Falcons could go back into the first round and get a quarterback. Is this likely? Um, yeah, I, I can see it's likely with being Marcus Mariota and um, uh, Felipe Franks are only two on the roster. I absolutely could see that being the case. I talked about quarterbacks a while back. Um, I'm still, um, 
I don't know how much they looked into Carson Strong. They probably haven't. But Carson Strong looked like he could be a steal in the fourth or the fifth round. So you're talking about possibly 114 to 151. I don't think that's going to happen at this point uh, because there's just too many rumors and too much rumbling out there for how much that the Falcons really like Desmond Ritter. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. If they could take the 40, um, number 43 and move back up into the first round. Now, if they do that, they're probably going to end up giving, um, giving up number 74 as well. Maybe uh, round three, number 82 to get back up in the first. I, I would not be surprised because jumping, you know, you're basically jumping like nine spots to at least get to number 32. So you jump in nine spots, you're probably going to give up. I don't think they're going to give up another second round. Um, I don't think they're going to give up number 58 to move up that much. I wouldn't be some, yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening at that, that, that'd be almost robbery. If they did I have to um, give up the, the second round pick because I don't think Ritter Ritter may not be there at 43. So with that being said, if they move up to get Ritter, they're probably going to get up, up 43 and maybe 82, possibly 74, possibly. So let's just make that, let's just think about that. They move up to get Ritter at number 31 or 32 or whatever the case may be. Now you're going to have a receiver possibly and uh, you're going to have a receiver or a pass rusher possibly and a quarterback. Now this first round quarterback, we're possibly talking about he may play right away. Now we already saw the Trey Lance situation, you, you know, uh, so that's not, all in the cards to say that he will, but there's a high possibility. Marcus Mariota is still a pretty much of is pretty much still a safe uh a safe quarterback to have for right now. But laying in wait after a two year deal that Marcus Mariota signed, Desmond Ritter could be right there. So that's that. Now let's say uh, at number fifty eight, what are we going to do at number fifty eight? Now let's say if we did not get um a pass rusher at number eight this is a perfect spot to get a pass rusher i know a lot of people saying running back running back running back. look i believe that running back we'll get to that in a little bit but the running back could be picked at a later time and i think we can get a pretty decent one at that time but i i feel that at number 58 depending on depend I'll, I'll, I'll say this depending on the type of pass rusher that's still out there at number 58, we may jump to get a running back at 58. It just depends. This goes back to the best player available scenario that I, I kind of said, which player is better for the team or which better, which player is available, which better player is available at the pass rusher or the running back position, which one is better. So it's something you may want to think about you know, as a fan, just looking back, is this the best scenario for them? Uh, so depending on the running back, depending on the pass rush, we're probably looking at both. My guess, personally, I think we're going to go pass rush at 58. That's, that's the best scenario there. And we probably can get the best one available at 58. Like I said, there's so many guys that are out there. This could be the move. Now, flip that around. If they do go pass rush at number eight, what happens at 58? Now, I if this is the case, they go pass rush and quarterback, then at round two, number 58, I don't think they go receiver at 58. We may end up getting a second uh, edge rusher or maybe um, go running back. I mean, we may go just go all in at running back at 58 if we get an edge rusher in the beginning. So now you're probably talking about um, – yeah, uh, oh goodness, I can't remember all the running backs that I talked about back in my episode that I did one. You can go back and check that out. I know that running back from Texas A&M could be available. Um, James Cook could definitely be available. Matter of fact, there's a possibility that they could wait on James Cook and he could probably get picked in round three. So um, there, that's that right there. Um, but you, you you looking at a scenario, I mean, I think it's, uh the guy from Michigan is another one. Uh, you, you, you have a lot of guys, Hassan Reddick. I think his name is Hassan Reddick. You have so many scenarios at running back in the second, third, and in some cases, maybe the fourth round where 
if you go pass rushing in round one, you may go and get that running back this as early as number 58. Just depends on what's available right there. Now, flip side then one more time, because I'm going to talk about the possibility of the, um, the 74th pick. If we do go wide receiver, I'm looking at wide receiver quarterback at number four, wide receiver number eight, 43, get a quarter, uh, 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 the quarterback. And at 58, we will we'll get uh, uh, possibly uh, the pass rush. So that's the scenario that you possibly could flip flop eight and 58 pass rush or receiver. And if they do get a pass rush at number eight, we're probably just looking at a, a running back at or in round two. Now, and in and, and round three, now this is another scenario where we could possibly go linebacker or we could possibly, um, I, I believe we can possibly go linebacker or we can just continue to get, actually get the running back that we want. Now, what I say here is if we get the receiver at number eight, 43, we get the quarterback and, and uh, number 58, we get a pass rusher. Uh, we're probably going to go running back in round three. I not this is where I see possibly James Cook coming in, and uh, possibly getting you probably picking him up there, uh, or if it depends on how we feel about running backs later on in the draft, we may not even uh, get a running back at all, where we'll just get a linebacker, somebody who can um can uh be continuously, uh, I ain't gonna say continuously, someone who can continue to help with what Rashad Evans, Deion Jones can do. Um you still have a couple other guys who can play linebacker as well. I think um is it Michael Walker could possibly get in there as well. But you you, you can't have enough linebackers, especially with this defense that Dean Pease is running. Um that's just a far fetched scenario. And uh like I said, the round three pick number eighty two may be gone. Hell, seventy four may be gone. So, with that being said, with I mean, with the with the draft uh, trade to get uh, back in the first round. So, with that being said, we're probably looking at one pick in the third round. So, once again, we'll have. I'll go back. Let's say we do get the receiver. Let's say we do get the receiver at number eight. Receiver at number forty three, we get the quarterback. Uh, also, and um, not forty three, but we move up to get the quarterback in round two for the number forty three pick. I mean, 58, we turn around and let's say we get a pass rusher and uh, we'll turn back around in round three. We will more likely probably get a running back right there. So that that looks like that's the run right there. Now, if you get a pass rusher number eight, you get the quarterback move up in the second round. And uh, at number 58 right there, since we already had the pass rusher, we'll probably try to go running back, maybe another edge rusher. Maybe because I like I said I don't see us taking a receiver at, at number fifty eight. Now, um, if anything, I will say this, and I'll talk about this in the next episode. If Carl Pickens is around, then there's another uh, that, that 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 just throws. I ain't gonna say throws everything out of rack, whack, but that that's another scenario. But there's also a likely um, situation where Carl Pickens could possibly get in the fourth round. And we'll talk about that later on. Uh, I know his his uh, stock is going up a little bit, but there's been very uh, it's been pretty quiet uh, whispers about Carl Pickens lately. People talked about him earlier, but it kind of died down within the last week or so. So, with that being said, um, let me move this over here. So, with, me, with that being said, we'll talk about that in the next one when we talk about uh, picks four through six. But for right now. Uh, if we can continue to get the pass rush at number one and number eight, I'm sorry, go back in the first round to get the quarterback. Say we we'll, we won't get a receiver at number uh, round two, so we'll probably get another edge rusher or a running back. Then round three, um, we can still flip that, get another edge rusher or um a linebacker or a running back. I don't see us getting having a pick at number eighty two. I think that may be be the trade or seventy four. That may be the trade to get a quarterback and go back into the first round to get a quarterback. That's just my scenario, and that's how I feel about it. Um, so, at the end of the day, that's what we're like. I said that's what we're looking at. Uh, I think they're going to get some solid picks wherever the way we go. If we go receiver or pass rush in the first round, uh, I do see us possibly getting uh, uh, that quarterback 
in round two or moving up to get the quarterback if we don't have to move up. Um, That second pick in the 58, at 58, like I said, you're looking at running back, possibly another pass rusher. I don't see us getting a receiver at 58, so that could be the move right there. And um, if we don't get a wide receiver at number one, at number eight, we may get one later on down in the draft. Uh, but I do see running back being picked up at uh, round three. Now I will say this, and um, I will I will say this before I go. There's a possibility that we don't get a running back until late, late in the draft. We're talking about fourth, fifth, or sixth round. With that being said, we may, you know. If we get a pass rush early, we may get that receiver in the third round. I just don't see it going in the second. I I I I'm not sure because the the drop off in receivers fall off so far. I don't see there's no reason to get one in the second. Outside of in my opinion, outside of Carl Pickens and maybe um Bell out of Purdue, maybe. But I don't I'm not sure that those guys Either one of them could probably get in the late third round, early fourth round. But we'll look into all that. If you like this content, hit the like button. Share this content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I know that probably was a lot. Probably confused a, a few people about where we're going at it in the draft. But um, that's just my scenario for rounds one through three. Uh, the next episode, I will talk about four through six. Um, and a lot of this right here, four through six, is going to be um, literally probably be best player available because most of the, you know, the top tier players are probably gone. You're probably going to get some steals, depends on who drop, but more likely it's going to be best player available. And in rounds four through six, we have four picks and um, depends on what happens with, with the trade. We probably going to end up getting with eight players in the draft, but we'll see about that. I'm not really sure, but um, moving back into the first round is a high possibility. Think about that. And um, the coaches and the staff at, at, in Atlanta, I've heard and I've read a lot of them really liking Desmond Ritter. Would not be surprised if that plays out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed all of this um, draft talk. I could be found on the YouTube Rumble um, and on the audio side, Anchor Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, which is Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. Give me a five-star rating on that star chart. Also, if you don't mind, give me some feedback. Let me know how I did. Good, bad, or indifferent. All right, y'all. I'll be back on Wednesday with another, um, another you know, episode. And we're going to be talking about rounds four through six. All right, y'all. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.